updating and changing the tag layout in the Edge. The tag layout that prints for each category is held by the category record. To get there, we're going to go to Inventory, Categories, List. When the list comes up, you're going to choose the category that you want to update the tag layout for. Once I'm in my diamond pendant category, in order to work with the tag layout, I need to go to the tag tab at the top. The tag tab is where you're going to change the layout that prints for items that are entered in this category. The very first thing is what type of media are you using for this category? So for diamond pendants, if I'm using string tags, I already have that set. And I know that because in the background, you could see the outline of a string tag. If I was using a dumbbell tag, I can click on that and the edge will change the layout and try to move the fields that are currently on the tag to the correct spots in this new layout. The outline box, if you uncheck that, will show you what the tag will look like when it prints by removing the outlines of each of the fields. A tag can have as many fields as you'd like as long as they fit in the layout. The number of fields that you can have on an individual tag is based on the size of the font that you use for the fields. In order to change the tag layout, you can add a new field by hitting add and that will give you an empty field. Now currently there's not a lot of room on my tag, but whenever you add a field, you can change the size of it by putting your arrow over it and at the ends it becomes a double arrow. If you click and hold, you can drag that into a longer field or a shorter field. If you put your arrow over the bottom line, that double arrow will make the field taller or shorter. If you were to click on the field when you have the cursor with four arrows, what that does is allow you to move the field wherever you'd like to put it. These can also be accomplished by using your arrow keys. With the arrow keys, if you press them, it will move the box in whatever direction the arrow key is, and it moves it one spot at a time. If you hold shift, your left and right arrow keys will make the field longer or shorter, and the up and down arrow keys will make the field taller or shorter. Once you have a field, you need to decide what is going to print in that field. The data drop down at the top, once you've clicked into a field, tells you what data will print in that field. Currently, there is none. If I left it that way, this field would print blank on the tag. If I just wanted my store name to print on this field, I could either use prefix or postfix and type my store name. If I was to put this somewhere on the tag, every time I printed a tag, it would say Edge Jewelers on the tag. With prefix and postfix, it will prefix prints before the data that's put into the field, postfix prints after. If you were to check the box that says only print if data is present, they will only print if there's data in the field that you've chosen. Since I've chosen none, you will notice that Edge Jewelers disappeared. So if I wanted Edge Jewelers to print every time, I would have to leave the checkbox for only print if present unchecked. Each field has the ability of changing the font and the size. So if I wanted my font to be a little bigger, when I click on that field, I can go to font. I could choose the font type. So if I wanted this to be a cleaner font, I could choose Arial. Once I choose a font, I can choose a style of the font if there are others. So I'm gonna choose narrow bold. And then I have my size. So as I scroll down, if I wanted my name to be fairly large, I could choose 22. 
and now Edge Jewelers would print in fairly large font on the tag. If I was to click back on font, you're not limited to only the sizes that are on the dropdown. If I wanted this to be size 21, I can type in 21, and when I click OK, it will change to one font smaller. Also on font, you have the option of strike through or underline. Strike through will put a line through the text, and underline will underline the text. Alignment. Besides font, you have an alignment option. If you hit that drop down, you can align the fields top left. Let me make this a little bigger so you can see what I'm talking about. So top left is going to be in this top corner. Top center would be at the top of the field and in the center. Top right would be at the top to the right. Middle will center it inside the box, but to the left, center, or right. And then again, bottom, you have left, center, and right. If I wanted these all to be centered totally, I could say middle center, and that will always put my text in the middle center of that field. Depending on what type of data you choose. So again, we don't have any current data, so I'm going to get rid of edge jewelers, and I'm going to show you the data dropdown. Every field available to this category can be printed on the tag. The data is going to come from the item record. Most fields are pretty clear in what they print. One of the fields that's not as clear is Jumbo. If you choose Jumbo, it will always print size if it's a ring and you are putting ring size in, length if it's a bracelet or necklace or chain, metal, which is the 14, color, which here is yellow, the finish, which in this case is polished, and then always the total diamond weight. If one of those fields is missing from the category, it will not print on the tag. So it will automatically adjust itself to not include that data. Another field that is a little different is date and cost. When choosing date and cost, it will automatically put the date and cost of the item on the tag in a code. The code is what you see on my screen. The X's represent random letters. The M's are the two digit month. The Y's are the two digit year and the C's are the cost. So based on when the item was entered and what the cost is, this will always look different. Every time you print the tag, the random numbers will change. So to show you what I'm talking about, I will type a sample in here. So if we had an item that was entered in December of 2017 and the cost was $2,500, it would look something like this. And what that is, is again, the seven here is a random number. The 12 is going to be in between the dash. That's the month. Then there's a random number with the two digit year. Then there's a random number. And then the cost, depending on what the cost is, that will be larger or smaller. And then another random number. So looking at the tag really quickly, if you were looking for the cost, all you have to do is look for the second dash the cost will start right before that, and it will be all the numbers except for the last one. So date and cost will always print in this format. The last two fields we haven't talked about are format and parameter. Format is how you want the data in this field to be formatted. If it's a number, or I, sh I should say a dollar, it will give you the option of whether you want dollar signs, commas, decimal points. If you want to drop everything, including the cents, or if you want everything but the cents, but you still want your comma. Also for values, for dollars, 
you have the option of price code and letter code. You can also change to regional currency based on how your computer is set up. For dates, does it print the date just month, month, year, year, month, month, day, day, year, year, month, slash, year, month, slash, day, slash, year. So those are your formats. So I'm going to choose a field that is a currency field. So we have the option of cost, recost, retail, current, all of those are currency fields. So if I was to choose cost, the format would let me print the cost on the tags. So if I was to choose this, this field would print the actual cost on the tag. Most likely you don't want to do that. One of our other options we have is choosing just the numbers and then printing a prefix and a postfix at the front and end of that number. So you can create your own code for your cost by doing this. So if my cost, I'm gonna go into sample, was 2,500, the first prefix, which is 6TY7, then it would print the cost, and then my postfix, which was 8UYT. So per category, you can create your own kind of cost code. The other option you have besides just choosing a format for the numbers is to choose either a price or letter code. We'll start with letter code. If my cost was $2,500 and I do not put in my actual code, nothing will print on the tag it'll just print dashes or equal signs. The parameter is what drives your letter code. You actually have to type your letter code in. Letter codes need to be non-repeating letters. So if I was to use my letter code, it is 10 letters that are not repeating. So based on that code, it is printing my cost in code. So if you look up here, the P is my zero, the A is my one, the R is the two. So it's printing R for my two. It's printing N for my five and P for my zero because that is my code. I can also do a letter code times 10, which will add an extra zero at the end, or a letter code times 100, which will add two zeros at the end. So letter code will let you substitute letters for numbers in any currency field. The other code you have is price code. Price code can be letters, but the difference with price code is that it can also be numbers or symbols. So if I wanted my one to be an at and I wanted my five to be a carrot, and my zero to be a five. That is how it would print. R caret 55. R shows up for the two because it is in that position in the price code. The caret shows up as five because it's in that position. And the five, which is in the front, is my zero. So the letter and price codes all go from zero to nine. The one thing I do want to mention in this video is the barcode. Everything else is pretty flexible on how big, how small, where you want to put it, everything else. The barcode, there are some best practices with the barcode. The barcode should be as large of a font as you can get it, that it fits on the tag and doesn't break into two lines. So to do that, if I click on the barcode field and hit font, I can increase my font to 28, and when I click OK, you'll notice the barcode fits perfectly and it's not broken. If I try to go to the next one on the list, which was 36, and click OK, what you'll see is if I open that field up, the barcode is actually split onto two lines. This would not work and would not scan. So I'd want my barcode to be smaller. The reason we want our barcode as large as it can be on the tag is that the larger the barcode is, 
the quicker a barcode scanner can read it and the more accurately it can read it. Depending on your tag, that font size will be different, but you want to make the barcode the biggest font it will allow you to print on one side of the tag and not break into two lines. Once you've updated your tag layout, you will need to hit save. So if I was to hit save and stay, that would save my tag layout. Now, if this tag layout fits for other categories, I can use the option of copy to at the bottom and choose what I want to copy. So if I was to choose tags, I can then hit the drop down and choose all of the other categories that I want this layout to go to. So you do not have to set up every category if they match. One last thing on tag fields are the couple of fields that are standard. Most fields, again, are self-explanatory, but stone fields, there are the option of center and side stone. Center will be the first stone on that item record, even if it's not a single stone. Side stones will be the second line on that tag. If you were to choose the combo, it would print number of stones, total weight or carat, depending on what it is, the shape, the type, the clarity, and the color. If you were to choose with cert, it would actually print all that same information, but also the lab and the report number. You will need a bigger field for all that information to print. It may not fit on one line, and you would have to make that field larger and shrink it so that it prints on two lines. You get the same option for side stones, side stone combo, side stone with cert. Besides the combo lines, you do have the option of all the individual fields for each stone that you can print on the tag. Short and long will either print the short value or the long value that normally goes in the description. For stone type, if it was a diamond, it would, if you choose short, by default, it would print DI. If you were to choose long, it would print diamond. All stones would combine all the stones and give you it all on one line. You also have total stone, which would give you total stone count, total stone weight, and then you have a separate one for just the diamonds, total diamond count, total diamond weight. Every field you put onto this category, even fields, detail fields that you've added, will be able to print on a tag. Lastly, every category can have its own tag layout. So on tags that do not have stones like carrot gold chain, you do not have to put any stone info, and you can make the other fields larger because you need less room for the stones.